Hey everyone, it's George Trami with Japanese from Zero, and we are continuing our journey through book four of Japanese from Zero. We are going through lesson three, and in lesson three, we've already been through a few things. Let's go ahead and look through what we've been through. We've been through the new words, and we've been through a few of the verbs. I split them up because today we're going to be talking about a set of verbs that you need to know all together instead of mixed in with other verbs, I would say. So we're going to talk about the wearing verbs. This is like putting on things, okay? Now, it might seem weird. Why would you need to dedicate a whole lesson to the wearing verbs? It's because in English, we just say, I'm wearing something or I'm putting on something. It's all the same thing, whether you're putting it on right now or wearing it right now. But in Japanese, depending on the type of clothing that you're wearing, you're going to have a different verb. So we're going to go through them. Uh, remember, if you don't have the book, you can buy it right here at this link. This link goes to the American uh, version of Amazon, but it's available on other Amazons. And as you can see, we have pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, ratings. 96 people have given their opinion. Go read those. Uh, I'll save you a little bit of time. I'll show you the high praise that we got recently. Uh, good product. It's a good, it's a good product. It's a pretty detailed review. Uh, if you can't trust that, I don't know what else you can trust. All right. <laughs> Go look at some of the other reviews. Or add your own if you've already bought book four. I would appreciate the reviews. Really, really help. All right. Moving on. Let's go. Ahead. Hmm. Let's look at what's, what's with this? We've got six. I'm sorry. I can't even count. We've got five verbs. All mean to wear and to put on. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at what they are. We've got this one. Kiri. Jesus. That is, a, okay, hang on one second. So we have five verbs that all mean to wear and all mean to put on. Let's look at them first and then we'll talk about how they're split up. So we've got. Kiru. Kiru. Haku. Kaburu. Tsukeru. And uh, skeru, by the way, is not in book four. It's a bonus. And this is also a bonus. Some of you are thinking, how can suru mean put on or wear? Well, we'll show you. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the first one. Again, it is... Kiru. All right. So it means to wear. But what does it mean to wear? It means shirts and jackets, etc. And the pattern is the thing that you are wearing is marked with the object marker, o. Okay, so something, o, kiru. Okay, I don't know if that's a... Was that the right? All right, that's obviously some other recording that means I'll do it by myself. Well, okay, I'll do it by myself. That's a good hint. Clothing o kiru. So let's look. We have jacket. Okay, for if it's cold outside, you're gonna put on a jacket. Jacket o kimas. Now, kiru is an iru eru verb. That means you drop the ru. Iru eru verb or any verb that rhyme with iru or eru at the end, the last two syllables. So, <laughs> lost my train of thought. So, kiru. If you heard it, you've heard kiru as another verb, cut. Kiru to cut is not an iru eru verb. It's what we call an iru eru exception verb, or in other words, a regular verb. That means it's going to go through all, it's not going to drop the ru, it's going to change the ru on the end. It's going to become kiru is to cut. And if you're going to cut, I will cut, it would be kirimas. But if you want to wear something or you're going to wear something, it is kimas. The ru is dropped. Okay. This is why, as I've said in the past, Calling a verb a ru verb makes absolutely no sense because you can have two verbs be the exact same sound, both end in ru and have no correlation to each other. Okay, so this is not ever kirimas. If you said, if you said jacket o kirimas, it would mean I'm gonna cut my jacket, and you don't want to say that, right? You wanted to say I'm gonna wear a jacket. Jacket o kimas. All right, uh, t-shirts. Is a t-shirt. It's another thing that you put on. Anything where you're doing this kind of, of an action or pulling it on like this, or even if it's over your head, but if it lands here on your shoulders, it is going to be kiru. Doresu, doresu o kimasu. And hakama. Hakama is a, a traditional Japanese clothing uh, that is uh, right along there. It's, it's as known, probably not as well known, I would say, as like a kimono or a yukata, uh, but hakama is something uh, you can read an entire article on Wikipedia like I did. All right, let's look at some example sentences here. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this first one is. 
いつもスーツを着ています。Now, this is not true for me, but this used to be true for a lot of people back in the days, especially in Japan.、Uh, even today, this is still a common thing that you might see in Japan, although they did try to do some energy saving thing. They had a cool Uh, what were they calling? Kuru Japan? I don't know if that Cool Japan was about anime and stuff like that. It might have been that that was a campaign uh, to get uh, to, to let, remind the world that Japan was cool because they had animation and manga. But there was a, some campaign back in the day where they were trying to save on electricity、uh, usage and they were promoting not wearing neckties and wearing more casual attire to, to work. So I don't know if this sentence、uh, is said as much in Japan, but you could change suits. To anything else. Now, even though there's a different verb that we're going to learn for pulling on pants and putting on a necktie, because it's a suit and it has a jacket, they're going to call it kimas. You're always going to use、uh, kiru instead of another one of the verbs that we're going to learn today. So, what do you think this means? Shigoto de, de is the event location marker, it, it marks where an event. Happens and it happens at where? Shigoto, work. Itsumo, always, suits o k i t e m a s So I'm always wearing a suit at work. All right, let's go to the next one. Kyo wa samui no de, koto o kimas. All right, Kyo wa samui no de, because today is cold, what are we gonna wear? Kyo wa samui no de, koto o kimas. So we had jacketto before. And koto. Now, now you might be saying, well, what's the difference between a jacket and a coat? And I don't know. And most people don't know. So it's not a big deal. You just need to know that if it goes over the shoulders, you're going to use kiru. All right. So I'm going to wear a coat since it's cold today. All right. Now, I want to point out here just a little bit of a review. Kyo wa samui no de. Why is the wa there? Because maybe yesterday wasn't cold. Maybe a few days prior back, it wasn't cold. But all of those days, we don't care about. We're talking about today. Because today is cold, I'm wearing a coat. Maybe the conversation was like,、uh, man, yesterday wasn't cold at all. Yeah, but because today is cold, right? Kyo wa samui no de, right? Koto o kimasu. Kyo wa samui no de, koto o kimasu. All right, and we could have also said kyo wa samui kara. That would have been also fun. All right, let's look at this next one. Now, you might not know the word sotsugyo shiki, but sotsugyo means to graduate, and shiki is a ceremony. So, sotsugyo shiki is graduation ceremony. You'll hear shiki in other things. For example, kekkon. Kekkon means marriage. Kekkon shiki means wedding ceremony. Okay, so at their graduation ceremony, what about it? Okay, on my graduation ceremony or for my graduation ceremony, hakama o kiru to omoimasu. Sotsugyo shiki ni hakama o kiru to omoimasu. All right, so I think I'm going to wear a hakama for my graduation ceremony. And as you can see here, it's very common for girls to wear hakama on graduation day. Uh, also, it's the typical image,、uh, which I read, by the way. You can, read, you can read this in a Wikipedia article. It's a typical image of a Japanese teacher is to have a hakama on, all right? Normally worn over a kimono. All right, moving on. All right, so let's go ahead and. Now, we had this in this lesson. We have, I think it was, no, it was last lesson. We learned something yasui and something nikui. And if it's an iru edu verb, you drop the ru and you add yasui to it. So we have this. Kono doresu wa... Right. This dress is easy to wear. This dress is easy to wear. If it was not easy to wear, we would say, Kono dress wa kinikui desu. Alright, moving on. Alright, next verb. So now we've got kiru under our belt, everything that comes over like this. Now let's look at this one. Haku. Now, I love giving other verbs that have the same sound.、Uh, haku, by the way, because it ends in a ku, Is a regular verb. Any verb that ends in anything but a ru, everything that doesn't end in a ru is always 100% without fail a regular verb. If it ends in a ru, it could be any type. If it ends in nothing but a ru, everything but a ru, 
is absolutely a regular verb, which means you conjugate it all the way through the hiragana chart, right? Which is also called godan verb in Japanese. This is just, just a little bit of a review. I know a lot of you know this already. And iru eru verbs in traditional Japanese teaching are called ichi dan verb, which means one step, because you drop the ru and you add things to that. The only first step is you drop the ru. But if we're talking about a regular verb, which we call in our system, or in it, uh, a godan verb in the Japanese uh, traditional system way of teaching, then it's five steps, godan. So did I say ichi dan? I meant godan. Godan means five steps. It's because ka, ki, ku, ke, ko, ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. That's five steps, right? So haku, informal, to wear. Hakimas, hakimasen, hakimasen deshita goes to the key plus your stem, uh, your endings, and that's the key. Then you've got haki, ka. Uh, I, I messed up the order again. It's ka, haka, nai, won't wear. Haku, informal, will wear. Hakakiku. You know what? Figure it out. <laughs> the order is wrong, but I'll, I'll give you the next two just to make sure that we get through it. Hako. So, kakiku ke ko, the final one. Hako u, adding an u on the end means let's. It's volitional or let's do form. Okay. Then I'm missing one. Ke. Hake ru, to be able to wear. Hake nai, cannot wear. And of course, with hakeru, anytime you have a verb that goes into its potential form to be able to do, it becomes its own version of an iru edu verb because it rhymes with iru edu. Every verb, every verb without fail that goes into its potential form is treated exactly like an iru edu vor, verb or a, an ichidan verb, which means you just drop the ru and then you add all the stems again. So hakeru means I can wear. Maybe the Maybe the thing that you're putting on is too too small or too big. But you say, no, I can't. I can fit. This fits me. Hakeru. But if you can't wear it, hake nai. Hake ma sen. I was able to wear it. Hake mashita. All right. That's enough review. Let's go ahead and do this. Haku. So haku is to put shoes on, pants on. Now, when you're using haku to wear, it's things that are coming up. You're pulling into them. Shoes, socks, pants, things like that. Okay, and the pattern is the same for all these verbs. It's going to be the item that you wear with the object marker o and haku, right? So you've got kutsu o haku, I will wear shoes. Kutsu o hakitai, I want to wear shoes. Yes, when you say hakitai, it could become ga. Commonly it becomes ga, kutsu ga hakitai, okay? We're not gonna talk about why, but it just does, okay? Uh, kutsu shita, socks, kutsu shita o Hakimas. I will wear uh, socks. So there are some people that don't wear socks. Me, right now, not wearing socks. Okay. And kutsu shita haite masen. Kutsu shita o haite imasen. I am not wearing socks. Zubon, pants. If you're talking about panty, panties. If you're talking about uh, what Japanese call underwear, uh, pantsu. It's weird that pants are called zubon and underwear can be called pantsu. Keep that in mind. Uh, for female, I, it's where I looked over, assuming maybe I had a pair of underwear sitting here on the chair that I was going to show you. If I did, showing it to you would have been disgusting, and I would be embarrassed, and I'd cut it from the video. Uh, and then we have skato. So skato is another thing that you pull up. And even though dress is kiru, dressu wa haku. Yeah, I think doresu, because doresu is not just the skirt portion. It's also the portion that goes over your shoulders. Doresu is always kiru and skato, because it's just the skirt portion, is haku, because you pull up into it. All right, let's look at some example sentences. Okay, so here we have gakko de wa in school. Now, de is our event location marker. We have a double particle here. Gakko de wa, well, as for in school, because we're showing a little bit of emphasis as the location. I don't know about any other place, but for in school, shiroi kutsushita wo haite imasu. Everyone, minna, everyone is wearing white socks, okay? Everyone is wearing white socks at school, okay? Okay, next one. Atarashii kutsu o haita kara kutsuzure ga dekimashita. Okay, atarashii kutsu o haita kara. Now, this is a reason. We're not saying what we've done. We're just giving a reason for why something happened. Atarashii kutsu o haita kara because I wore new shoes now it's interesting, kutsuzure means shoe shift. So you're saying, 
hmm, I got a shoe shift, but really kutsuzure means a blister, okay? Be due to the fact that your shoe is not the right size or it's new or whatever, it's not been worn in yet, right? So since I wore a new pair of shoes, I got blisters on my feet. Now, dekiru here means form, right? So, so you formed blisters on your feet. Uh, if you're cooking something, you can say, dekita. It doesn't mean I did it. It means it's done. It means that the food is done. For example, uh, if I am waiting on my wife to cook something, I could ask her, dekita. Is it done? And she could say, mada dekite nai. No, it's not done yet. It doesn't mean, were you able to do it? And she doesn't say, in response, I have not been able to do it yet. So, dekiru here means to be made or done. Or done. You can make a friend. Tomodachi ga dekiru. Tomodachi dekita. Did you make a friend? Okay. Just a little bit of review as we go through this. Because, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in Japanese. And I would hate to teach a lesson and not talk about every part of a sentence. It's... um. It seems unfair to assume that you remember everything, okay? There's no shame in not remembering everything. And I remember, you know, it still happens to me, uh, not as much as before, but uh, I learned Korean for the last nine years. And I actually went to Korea and went to classes and uh, every day went to classes for multiple hours a day. And I remember being so frustrated in the sentences that they would use that they would use things that I'd never heard before. Like, for example, we had sotsugyoshiki. Maybe you didn't know that word. Maybe you never heard kutsuzure. And they just assume, oh yeah, you should know this. No, you can't know everything. And even if it's something that you learned, there's no shame in forgetting. You will forget. I'll tell you my secret. I no longer take notes anymore in Korea. If I hear something and I like it, I'll either remember it immediately. If it's pretty good, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm going to remember that one. And I put some effort into remembering it by repeating it in my head a few times. Matter of fact, I get a loop going in my head sometimes. Uh, or I go, you know what? I know that that's interesting, but if it's important, it'll come up again later. Okay? I don't stress out over trying to learn everything. Because if it is important, you indeed will hear it more than once. Kutsuzure will be important to a certain portion of the audience. Some of you guys have a blister on your foot right now. And you're going to say to your friend, you're not. it's not even going to be about wearing a shoe. You're going to, the thing that you learned from this lesson will be about blisters. And you'll say, oh, ashi ga itai desu. And they go, why? And you go, kutsure ga dekita kara. Because I got a blister. All right, moving on. Kyo wa skato o hakitai desu. Kyo wa skato o hakitai desu. I don't know why I'm repeating everything. Kyo wa skato o hakitai desu. So here we go. We're just taking haku, which is a regular verb. E form plus tai makes it the want to form. Kyo wa. As for today, we would never say that, by the way. You wouldn't translate it like that. I'm just doing that for emphasis, okay? This is simply just, I want to wear a skirt today. But really what's happening in Japanese is, as for today, today being the topic, what about it? Well, I want to wear a skirt. You're putting a little bit of emphasis on today. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. So now, jeans is jeans. But you'll also hear them say jipang. Jipang is short for jeans pants. Okay. Even though pants we know in Japanese means underwear, here they're taking it from the direct English, not the appropriated English that they're using for underwear. Okay. So jeans uh, or jipang. Jipang wo haite iru toki ga ichiban raku desu. Now, this kanji right here, raku, is the kanji, if you've studied any kanji, it's the kanji for enjoyable. And you might think, okay, if I know some kanji, like if I studied with a book that didn't give contextual usage of kanji, <coughs> not kanji from zero book, <coughs> kanji from zero book actually teaches a lot of context. I'll give you some of the context here. Ichiban raku doesn't mean the most fun or enjoyable. Raku means comfortable. Okay, so um, this means it's I'm most comfortable when I'm wearing jeans. Okay, I feel comfortable the most. I probably should have fixed that English. I feel most comfortable when I am wearing jeans. Jeans を履いている時が一番楽です。You can have a job that's raku. My work is just easy. Raku also means easy. Like a lot of times, um, 
uh, services will say that they're rak rak, you know, very comfortable, easy to do, super uh, relax with our product, okay? All right. All right. Now we have this one. Kaburu. 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 No, kaburu is to wear things such as hats. So we've had kiru, like this, haku, pulling up, and now we've got on top of your head, things coming down on you are kaburu, okay? So um, normally written in hiragana, good note. Notice that the note is now not pink, very hard to read before, now it's blue, hopefully that works better for us. All right, so the thing that you're putting on your head is o kaburu, all right? You've got boshi or cap, hat or cap. You've got helmetto, helmet. You've got katsura, or the other way to say it, zura. I don't wear a wig, but eventually, I, I do like wearing wigs. I've worn wigs before in the past. I love wearing wigs. All right. And masuku, or fukumen. Now, fukumen, um, I've never really used that word. Initially, we had an example sentence with fukumen in it, and um, there was a subnote saying that mask is more commonly used. So I just changed the sentence. Uh, after consulting with my wife, I said, hey, let's change this to mask. Because uh, even though there's two types of masks, there's the mask that you have for uh, preventing colds or a specific virus, which we're, we're not gonna talk about in this time. <sighs> Who wants to hear that? Uh, but Japanese love to wear these masks. Uh, Asians like to wear these type of masks. And then you have what we think of typically as a mask, not like a surgical mask, we think of Halloween masks. That's what we're talking about here, okay? So a fukumen is like a disguise uh, and for example, uh, you can have a, what is it called? What do they call it? Fukumen, I think they call it Fukumen Keisatsu, is like a disguised police officer. That's just a, a police officer wearing clothing nor, that are normal. They're not showing, they're not wearing a uniform, so you don't know that they're cops. So by lack of them wearing a uniform, they're disguised police officers, or what we would call plain clothed police officers. Uh, I don't think the kanji is different. I think that's that's it. Fukumen Keisatsu. All right, moving on. Let's look, Let's get to some example sentence. Oh, let me take a drink. Jesus. <clears throat> All right, here we go. A little bit thirsty. Natsuno aida wa itsumo boshi wo kabutte imasu. All right. So, natsuno aida means during summer. Now, uh, you could say, you know, from what you, you would think, oh, when it's summer, natsuno toki. You can also do that, but aida shows a nice span of time. It's during the interval of summer, right? The during summertime. Natsu no aida means summertime. And itsumo, always, what do you always do? I'm always wearing a hat during summer. Natsu no aida wa itsumo boshi wo kabutte imasu. All right, so I'm always wearing a hat during summer. Now, because we're talking about habitual things, you don't have to use the kabutte imasu. You could say, I always wear hats in summer. So that would be natsu no aida wa itsumo boshi wo kaburimasu. Now, remember, kaburu, is a regular verb. It doesn't end in iru eru. Here's the rule. If a verb ends in ru and it's not iru eru, chances of it being any other type of verb but regular are very slim. I would say 99% of the time, only because there are some other verbs that end in ru. There's the irregular verbs and there's the what I call the aru verbs, which are nothing to do with aru like exist, but like irashiru and gozaru, these very high-level polite verbs. Uh, for lack of a name, I call them, they're like keigo verbs, which is uh, the high-level polite stuff. Uh, but but you can assume, you can make a general rule for your brain that if it doesn't have an iru eru sound, it's gonna be regular and you're gonna have to, so kaburu would never be kabumas ever. You would never drop the ru on a verb that didn't have an e sound or an s sound before the ru, okay? Ever, you just wouldn't. Matter of fact, that's a solid rule. Wait, let me think about this for a second, yeah. Solid rule. Okay. I was only thinking about the uh, the irashiru, gozaru type verbs. Those are really whack out. We learned about that, remember, in the very beginning of book four. Uh, that's where you drop the, the ru and put an i there. So irashiru becomes irashaiimasu, irashaiimasu. And gozaru becomes gozaimasu. That is a completely separate thing. We're, we're not talking about any special category of verbs. When you have a normal verb and it doesn't end in an iru eru sound, it is going to be a regular verb or a godan verb, so it has to be kaburimasu or kabutteimasu, all right? So if you want to say, I always wear hats in summer, natsu no aida wa itsumo boshi wo kaburimasu. It does not have to be teimasu for it. All right, moving on. Bike ni noru toki wa 
ヘルメットをかぶってください。It's a very simple command here.、Uh, バイクに乗るときは、when you ride a bike. Now, bike does not mean bicycle. In America, in English, I don't know about England, in American English, bike generally, generally means a bicycle. Of course, adults do say, like, I, I ride a, I have a motorbike. We have motorbike, right?、Uh, but typically in America, when you say bike, you mean bicycle. In Japan, when you say bike, it always means, it can never mean anything but motorbike. So、uh, when you ride a motorbike or a motorcycle,、uh, helmet, please wear a helmet. ハロウィンで狼のマスクをかぶります。All right. So, ハロウィンで。ハロウィンで狼のマスクをかぶります。Okay. So, for Halloween or on Halloween, 狼 meaning a wolf のマスクをかぶります。I will wear. Oh my gosh, I moved too fast. Sorry. On Halloween, I'm going to wear a wolf mask. All right. Next one. Now, this one is a little bit tricky one. うるさいから。布団を頭からかぶりました。Listen again. うるさいから、布団を頭からかぶりました。So we have a reason. うるさいから。Because it is loud. Okay? うるさい can also mean bothersome. And it also often gets translated in anime as shut up. Okay? A lot of times someone will be being irritating or bothersome or loud and they'll be like, blah, 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 and someone will go, うるさい or うるせい Whatever they're going to do in、uh, animation, right? And that gets translated in the subtitles to shut up because that's the closest thing we have in English. Normally, you won't see it as you are a bother. You are being loud. Okay, but that's what they're saying. Urusai kara. Because it's loud, futon o atama kara from my head kabrimas. That is a direct translation. It doesn't make a lot of sense. In English, it's since it was loud, I put a futon over my head. So to put something over your head, Or t- any, coming from this direction, it's going to be kaburu. Even though you're not wearing it, you're putting it over your head, you can use kaburu here. Okay? Now, I can give you another special one. I don't have the sentence here, but mizu o atama kara kaburimashita. So, why would you put water over your head, right? Atsui kara, because it's hot. Mizu o atama kara kaburimashita. I poured water over my head. It has to be kara. Okay, it's from starting at your head, you, you poured it on you. All right, all right, moving on. Skater. Now, this is the bonus one. Skater. And it should be in the lesson. I probably should have added it.、Right? This is to wear to put on an accessory, something like a necktie, something like a hat, okay? Something like earrings, all right? So, something, oh, skater. Now, つける、hmm. It rhymes with いるえる。It's an いるえる verb. So it's not つけります。Okay? It's つけます。Alright? So, マスク。Now, we had mask just a second ago for Halloween. But that type of mask typically goes over your head. That's why it's kabudu. This is a type of mask that you put on this way. So it is not. It's, a, a つける is like to, an, to attach something. It's like an attachment. Okay? So this is. Mask will scare to put on a mask. Surgical masks, masks to avoid colds, viruses, things like that. Okay. Now,、uh, this, this graphic is a little bit weird, but it's earrings. Trust me, it's earrings.、Uh, in English, we say earrings to mean a pierced earring. But in Japanese, if you say earring, it always means a clip on. So in English, we have earrings and clip ons. But in Japanese, piasu is how they say earrings. In English, right? So, piasu is something that's you got the hole, and a earring is just a clip on. Keep that in mind. Okay, and necktie. Necktie is skater. Even though it might go over your head, even though it might be a clip on, even though it might be tied on, it is going to be skater. Okay, and interesting one perfume. Perfume or kosui. Kosui literally written with smelling water, you know.、Uh, Scented water, kosui. So, kosui it is tsukeru. Okay, you put it on this way. Okay, tsukeru. Now, here's another bonus. So, we have tsukeru. Tsukeru means to put on, but also every one of these. Kore ra no item wa suru o tsukatte mo yoi. You can also use suru. 
in place of them. And I had my wife record both versions and both are fine. You can use suru to mean put on. All right. So here we go. Seki o ste iru toki wa mask o tsuke masho. Seki o ste iru toki wa mask o tsuke masho. When you are coughing, so seki o suru means to cough. Seki is a cough. <coughs> okay. And a kushami is a sneeze. <coughs> kushami and seki. <coughs> Sometimes you'll hear seki ga deru. A cough is coming out. Seki o shiteru means coughing. Seki o suru to cough. So when you are coughing, mask wo tsukemasho. Let's put on a mask. Okay, now you might hear masho a lot like this. This is a light command. It really is. It's kind of like a, re- a command. It's not a request. It's not like tsukete kudasai. Well, actually, tsukete kudasai is also a command, but this is a little bit lighter than that. Okay, so you're saying, let's go ahead and put masks on. Okay, when we're coughing. How about, how about you put it on before you cough? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so masho is often used as a polite command. So let's wear a face mask when you are coughing. That's, that's yes. It's a little bit weird in English, but hey, why don't we, why don't we wear a smith? Why don't, why don't we wear a face mask, huh? Now that you're coughing, huh? Even in English, we kind of do that. We, we make it volitional sounding, okay? Uh, but it's not. It's kind of a command. Okay? It's a little bit polite command. All right, so let's listen to it one more time. Alright, moving on. So, uh, oh, no, this, sorry, this didn't get colored, but Gakko de day is our event location. It's where the event is taking place. At school, don't put on earrings when you're at school. Now, Uh, if you've never been to Japanese school, maybe you don't know this, but Japanese school can actually make a lot of rules for the students that you would never imagine is possible in America. For example, you can say no colored hair.、Uh, you can't wear a certain、uh, color of socks.、Uh, you can't have earrings. Your skirt must be this length、uh, because they wear school uniforms. This is、uh, how Japan works. They're still way more strict in school than we are. It has gotten more relaxed over time. You know, Japanese kids used to go to school every Saturday. They don't go to Saturday school anymore. They used to go every Saturday, though. They had one day off a week. And even now, their summer vacations are just about a month long. An interesting another fact about Japanese school in America, I don't know about other countries, I only know about America, sorry.、Uh, we have summer vacation and we finish one grade at the end of the school year and then summer vacation starts. And then the beginning of the school year is at the end of summer vacation. In Japan, that's not the case. Everything in Japan is in、uh, spring. They have a short spring break where their school grade changes. Okay. This is also the period of hiring in Japan.、Uh, April. April is a, a big period of hiring for new companies. Okay, moving on.、Uh, oh, I meant to play, I apologize. I meant to play the other, the alternative version. So I'm going to take the, this one. Now let's hear the pseudo version of that. Exact same meaning. Let's do a mask, right? Mask goes through in this case means to put on a mask. Okay? Okay, so please don't wear or put on earrings at school. Same thing, there is a pseudo version. Okay, alright. Okay. As for neckties, that's why we're using the wire. As for neckties, well, what about them? I don't put them on that much. I don't wear them so much. Okay. I don't wear a necktie very much. Now, I used to always wear a necktie.、Uh, when I was a tour guide, every day I wore a necktie.、Uh, but not anymore. Not so much. Not that I'm at the home. All... That, the only time I might even possibly do it is today to show you wearing a necktie. Necktie wa amari tsukemasen. Necktie wa amari shimasen. All right. Moving on. Okay, it's a good one. If a girl is wearing a really great smelling perfume, okay, you might want to ask them, hey, what perfume are you wearing? We can do that with nan no something. What type of? Can, this is another way to say what type of. So, nan no kosui, literally, what perfume are you? You wearing. Right. Very 
Very good. Also, we can say this. Okay, good. All right, now that is all of the wearing verbs. We're going to have a quiz, but before the quiz, do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? Does anyone know who that is? This is Ami. Okay, now Ami is part of Kansai dialect from zero course. So we now have a course. If you like this course, for example, I have a whole nother course that I made specifically teaching Kansai dialect. And as you can see here, there's 21 videos in the course. It's not for beginners. If you're a beginner, please don't go get it. It's not really, I don't know any Japanese, but I'm gonna learn Kansai dialect. It doesn't work that way. It's integrated. At your level now of knowing Japanese, you can learn Kansai dialect because you're in book four. Especially if you're in book five, you could learn Kansai dialect. There's a tons of review. I never will teach、uh, me and Ami go through standard Japanese before we show you what's happening in Kansai dialect. I think it's really important that you know both. Okay? You can't just learn one without the other. We have a ton of real world examples going through Twitter and stuff like that. And it includes this new thing called the Video Vault. Video Vault, I, these are the only videos that are up there right now. I added them yesterday. For those of you that have purchased Kansai Dialect from Zero, click on Video Vault and you'll be able to watch all of these old videos that aren't available anywhere else、um, on YouTube.、Uh, I want to recommend a couple interesting ones here. This one right here,、uh, John's Day. This man murdered another Yes Japan member, but I didn't know that because he hadn't done it yet when I met him、uh, sometime in 2004 or 2005.、Uh, this one right here, A Day in the Life of an Interpreter. It's one of my favorite videos. The music in it's fantastic. I wish I could give you the music, but I can't. But it's me talking about being an interpreter. It's old, but still, I would say valid.、Uh, this one, way too controversial to do on YouTube. It would get slammed because I am very mean to some people at an anime convention, at least in the post edit.、Uh, this is from 2005, and just a lot of fun stuff. And I'll be adding more stuff. If you purchase Kansai Dialect Course, you get all of this. You get access to all of this. Now, right now, <clears throat> This will not be valid, what I'm getting ready to say right now, in the future. During our lockdown that we're in right now,、um, if you have purchased Kansai Dialect from Zero, if you go into my account, you can gift that to two other people. You can just give it away, okay? Or you could sell it if you want to、uh, access, okay? So normally, Kansai Dialect course is $150. Bucks, but right now, if you purchase it, up to three people can have, they'll get their, in their own account, they can have it. All you have to do is give the email. All right. That's how that works. So, final reason, final reason why you should get Kansai Dialect Ami is cute. I just have some photos to show you. It should, should work eventually. Come on. Come on. There we go. Come on. Come on, Ami chan. Ami chan. So cute. Ami chan was、uh, here in America for,、uh, I think, a month and a half. And we just went like crazy making these videos. Um, here she's not happy with me. Not sure what this face is for.、Um, yeah. She would come here every day after her school, going to English school. I'd go pick her up and, and I would be like, I would say, yeah, we're going to start right away. We're going to get right into it right away. But literally, it would take me like four or five hours to finish working on the PowerPoint. And she'd be like sleeping on the floor. Just like I took many perv photos that I sent, of course, to everybody, everybody and to her. And she. Forced me to delete them, but just her like this, <laughs> dead on the floor. Cute. Cute as a button. All right. So, this is、uh, one reason to get Kansai Dialect from Zero. All right. Now for the quiz. Are you ready? Now, I was thinking for the quiz, I'd be like, what's this guy wearing? But then I thought, why not? Why don't I just actually dress it? I have all of the parts. So, first question is, Ima, nani wo shite imasu ka? What am I doing right now? It's been a while. It's been a while. Let's see if I can do this. So, it is on the first try. Does it? Okay, wait. Let me think about this for a second. It's been a while. Okay, so I have to do this do a loopy aroundy, and then I come up over. That's it, that's it, that's it, Trombley. Come up over and in. I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Someone can point out that I'm doing it wrong if I am. It's been a while. If I was looking in the mirror, it'd be easier. Right now, I'm not looking in the mirror, so. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, I think I, I, think I got it. I think I got it. Oh, I should probably button this. Can I even button this? Will my neck allow it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit tough. 
We're not going to do the top button. All right. By the way, putting on a button on a shirt, Botan on skater, same skater. So what am I doing right here? What's just happened? This is your quiz. Okay. George's neck is too fat to put on the tie. All right. We did that. We did that. Now what am I doing? Question number two. What am I doing? You could say, what did, what did I do? In order, what did I just do? Okay. Okay, by the way, closing your button. Botan shimemashita. I closed my button, literally. Or botan. You can also say botan o shimashita. Probably. That probably works too. All right, final thing. Final thing. Oh, no, I got, I got, I got two things. All right, start with this. Okay. What did I just do? Third question. Fourth question. Now, I'm ready for a night on the town. That is it, guys. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more Japanese, obviously, we have Japanese from Zero books. We have the Kansai dialect from Zero course. You can get our books on Amazon. You can get our books on Book Depository. And of course, if you're not subscribed, why? Why are you not subscribed? You've watched this many videos. Subscribe, please. Uh, and hey, looks like you're still here. Why don't you watch this video? Pretty good. This video also probably really good. I don't know because I haven't linked it yet. And also, like I said, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Keep studying. The next video is really huge. Super important. So please watch the next video for the biggest grammar that you're ever going to learn so far. Bye-bye.